What's up guys, this is Ashley Keaton. Um, we've seen a video of China McLean. And she's talking about, you know, the deed of God. And the Trinity more so, which obviously, I'll just let you know where I stand from the beginning. I don't believe in the Trinity, right? Um, I do believe that Jesus is God, but I don't believe he uh, is three persons. I don't believe the son is a distinct person from the father, from, I think they're just, I would say from biblical, from what I read in the Bible, that they're all one. Um, so I just have a few questions for anybody who is a Trinitarian, who believes that like this, this Trinitarian diagram, if you believe in, because some Trinitarians are not the same all around. Some of them think they're Trinitarians, but they're like, they're not because they just believe that, you know, they probably believe that Jesus is not God, that the Father is separate from the Son. Those are not Trinitarians. The Trinitarian is someone who believes this right here. If you look at this diagram, you see how it said it might be in a mirror. I'm sorry, guys, but the Father is not the Son, the Son is not the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is not the Father, but they are all God. That to me, when I see that, that is exactly where the contradiction starts. Because you're saying, you're, you're, it's like, this is how I explain, like a loaf of bread, like this loaf of bread is one, but I cut it into slices. When I cut it into slices, it's not one anymore. It can either be one or it could be slices. But let's say, you know, God's a spirit. So those type of things can't really break what God is. Okay. Um, so then we have to just say that we don't understand it. Um, it's a mystery. You know, so because it's a mystery, we can't understand it. Well, I would disagree because the Bible tells us. Let's see what this verse is. The Bible tells us the mysteries. are given for us to know. Matthew 13, 11. It tells us, I just want to, I mean, I know these, but I, I want to quote it because I want to make sure that we have an understanding. If you disagree, you know, that's fine. This is why we're here. This is why we're here to discuss these things. Unfortunately, I have to be the guy to do it. Um, he answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Okay, so I would say, you know, maybe I'm totally assuming this. I'm going way too far. But I would say God is a part of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven since he is the king of heaven. I would say he's definitely you know, a part of that mystery, especially when you look at 1 Timothy 3.16, and it gives you another mystery about God that has something to do with the kingdom. Um, and he stretched out the heavens and earth alone by himself. And when you look at 1 Timothy 3.16, this is my go-to verse, you know, for someone who is, I'll just say it, I'm a oneness. Um, so 1 Timothy 3.16 all scripture. Let me see. Okay, I'm in 2 Timothy. Sorry, guys. Whoops. 1 Timothy 3.16. It says, and without controversy, it says, without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. So, did it say impossible to know is the mystery of godliness? No, it just says it's a great mystery. That doesn't mean there's no verse in the Bible that tells us that we cannot understand how the deity of God works. Yes, we may be human. So there's, you know, his ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. But can God reveal his deity to you? There's nothing in the Bible that keeps him from being able to do that. So when people say, um, if you can't understand the deity of God, then you have to show me a verse as to why. Um, you could say it's prideful for me not to be able, for, for me to just assume that I know how it works, but I really believe that it's right here. It says God was manifest in the flesh. It didn't say the sun God was manifest in the flesh. 
the spirit God, the, the, the Holy Ghost God, the Son God was manifest in the flesh. I would argue that the Son did not exist with God in a person sense. You won't find persons anywhere in the Bible. I don't even think it's there. In, I would say it's not there in context. When you look at, um, when you look at all the with and I'm, you know, even First Timothy three six. Uh, I'm sorry, even Genesis chapter one verse twenty six. And I, I, I would love to have a full conversation, but this is just as far as I can go. And I don't know if she's more um, saying that you know, God and Jesus are separate because we know the Bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and the word was made flesh. So if the word was made flesh, that means that God spoke his word. When he said, my son, when everything God speaks becomes, you know, it happens, right? But when God said his word, that's literally who he is, you know, he is his word. His word became flesh. Boom. Now you have the son. The word was God. The word was with God. Just because I am. See, this is the thing. When we look at these phrases, we say it's weird. It sounds weird, but we're dealing with spirit. So we have to be able to be okay with things sounding weird. But what we're looking for is and I'm not putting verses against verses. I'm putting them together and saying this works. But what doesn't work is people are people's interpretations of these verses. So when I say um, God, the son was manifested in the flesh, the Bible does not say that. The Bible just says God. So I don't separate father from that. I don't separate the Holy Ghost from that. I would say just like in Colossians 2 and 9, um, for in him, talking about Jesus, dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. I mean, I just take it literally, unless there's a reason to take it metaphorically, or maybe there's some other aspect I don't understand. And we can, you know, we can talk about it. If anybody wants to have this conversation, you know, I'm not out to, you know, get anybody. I, if, if the Trinity is the way that God is made up, I want to know that. And I want you to bring that to my attention so I can, so my mind can be changed. But it's funny, they say the one thing that you cannot be saved from, well, some Trinitarians say this, you can't be saved if you are, if you don't accept the Trinity because you're not accepting the Son or you're not accepting the Father. You're only accepting some other God that you made up. So how can you be saved from some other God that you made up? But at the same time, we say that it's impossible to understand the Trinity it's impossible. How could you possibly understand it? So that means whatever way you have, and correct me, maybe if I don't understand it correctly, but whatever idea of God that you've made up that you've tried to come close to the understanding of is going to be a different God than who he is. You're going to be missing the ball still. You're going to believe in a different God. So I just say we have a different understanding of that God. But where I would say the importance is, is when it comes into salvation, but that's a whole nother topic. Uh, but Genesis 126, and maybe, you know, I'm praying about this. This is what I got. Um, there's a lot of different interpretations on it. Let us make man in our own image, because this is the verse that phew, Pentecostals, apostolics, oneness people, they may have the hardest time with as far as um, just explaining it in lamest terms to where it's like, boom, we have to kind of speculate. But pray about this and see if this... Um, you know, it's something that God will reveal to you. This is what I was led to believe. And God said, let us make man in our image, right? So they would say that's definitely multiple persons um, because it's one God. And I, I feel like that's a force to try to make God be one and three at the same time. So it's not really, it's still not really solid, no matter how you look at it. It's kind of hard to take it. So... And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. Then verse 27, so God created man in his own image and the image of God created he him male and female created he them. Um, so God said, let us and then he did it. I would not say 
that he's talking to the angels and making some, you know, majestic declaration as a king saying, let us go here and then or let us do this. And he's the one that's signing it. I don't think that's what it is. I would say the spirit of God is singular and plural, but it doesn't have to be persons. So when God says, let us, if the water had a voice, the water could say, let us, because the water is both singular and plural, because it's an uncountable mass. So this maybe, maybe I sound super crazy right now, but the stuff that sounds crazy is what you have to pray about because the Bible says we are peculiar people and he will use the foolish things to confound the wise. So if I sound foolish to you, the first thing you want to do is pray about it because I've heard some foolish things and I've prayed about it and I said, oh my gosh, you know what? That's it. So this is my interpretation. If anybody wants to have a conversation, I would love to do it on live, you know, so um, that way people can benefit from the conversation. And uh, yeah, so... This is how I would explain the deity of God. I do think it's possible to, I would say it's possible to have an understanding of how the deity of God works. Maybe it's, it, it can still be a mysterious, whether we realize it or not. I mean, who's to say we cannot have the revelation of the mystery of God? Who says that we cannot have that? If God is so powerful, are you telling me that he can't reveal it to us if he wanted to? You know, so we're not ever going to understand God completely, but we're saying that there are certain things about God that we can't understand. We're limiting the revelation that we're going to get by saying that. And in a sense, we could possibly be limiting God. So I just pray, guys, that you all pray about this. And this is just my take on everything that I've heard. Um, you know, that'd be awesome if uh, if somehow China McLean uh reached out to me and had the conversation you know what i'm saying that would be awesome hey guys if you want to see that happen you know comment go go tell her yo go tell her yo talk to your boy ash all right because because you know that'll be uh that'd be interesting though but i'm i'm willing to talk to anybody because if it all fails i'll be a trinitarian oh these are the questions i have sorry what does it mean to be distinct? That's the part about the Trinity I don't understand. I forgot I was going to ask the Trin Trinitarian questions. So what is it about um, before I end it? You say Jesus is not the Father. To me, that means Jesus is separate from the Father. You say he's not separate, he's distinct. I would agree that Jesus, the Son, flesh, is separate. It, well, let me stop. I would agree that Jesus, the son, is different from the spirit father. But in that, I'm only saying that Jesus in the flesh is different from himself as the spirit in the spirit of God. There's a difference when he puts on that flesh, but he is still the same. There's just a difference in the way that he's shown and his capabilities are still the same because he could have easily you know torn that flesh off and sent a thousand angels two thousand angels or however many it was he could have easily still done that he had all the power he just humbled himself now the reason he humbled himself he chose not to use that power he says i don't know he's talking about this flesh if you want to take that flesh off and and take part as as god just be, the separation is is hard for me to understand like, what do you mean separate? Or what do you mean by distinction? Like, just explain distinction to me. And maybe it's just because it's a uh, mystery that we just can't, that it just stops there. But why? Why would we stop there when God told us to seek him out, ask for understanding? There's no reason to stop just because we don't understand. But look, man, y'all put some comments down there. Tell me what y'all think. Tell me is actually tripping. I might have to start a podcast. Maybe you should drop some names of what you think I should call it. I'm thinking we should call it Whack Woke Apostolic Christians Podcast. I don't know. Maybe we call it Apostolic Woke Christian. The Auk. I don't know. I don't know. I'm I'm thinking about some names, guys. Just 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 hit me up, man.
just hit me up. As long as we don't call it Worship and Praise Podcast, because, yeah, y'all done messed that up for us, all right? Praise God.